Well, Warhol's images, his iconic images, the Marilyn Monroe's, the screenshots of people staring blankly into a camera, the long videos of people sleeping, all of that has become ingrained inside of our collective cultural brain. It's part of the cultural fabric of this new mass-produced consumer global culture. His life, his life itself, his life as an artwork, it's almost like the epitome of the American dream. He came from nothing and he gained everything. He became the biggest superstar of the time. Did Warhol shape the culture? It appears that he merely reflected these two themes or obsessions or points of interest, which were inherent and dormant in people on a mass scale. These two themes are the idea of stardom, fame, immortality, whatever you want to call it, and through idolization, beating death. Mr. Warhol's keenest talents were for attracting publicity, for uttering the unforgettable quote, and for finding the single visual image that would most shock and endure. That his art could attract and maintain the public interest made him among the most influential and widely emulated artists of his time. Andy Warhol was born into a Polish immigrant family in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was a sickly child and grew up during the Great Depression. As a young adult, he attended Carnegie Mellon University and was not well liked by many of his professors, who claimed he had an attitude problem. Warhol was obsessed over the ideal of an unexpected and untimely death. The idea that this could all just end was expressed in his death and disaster series. More so, the idea that this could all just end without anyone knowing who you were. Warhol's death and disaster series are not of famous people, they are of the ordinary citizens who went about their life not expecting to die until they did unexpectedly. Of these paintings, Warhol says, it's just that people go by and it doesn't really matter to them that someone unknown was killed, so I thought it would be nice for these unknown people to be remembered by those who ordinarily wouldn't think of them. One example of Andy Warhol looking at this theme of unexpected and untimely death is his Tuna Fish Disaster, 1963. In Tuna Fish Disaster, we see tuna fish cans repeated over and over and over and over again. And below those tuna fish cans, we see smiling faces of old elderly women, two of them, two smiling unknown women who happened to die one afternoon while they opened up a nice can of tuna, tuna fish salad and made a tuna fish sandwich and then died of botulism a few hours later. Andy Warhol couldn't really even imagine anything which could be more anxiety provoking than dying from a tuna fish sandwich when you least expect it on a hot summer day. And so this is one of the ways that Andy Warhol coped with this. He made artwork out of it. He repeated the image over and over and over again. Something that Warhol became increasingly aware of was the coverage of death and disaster in the news. He began to obsess over these themes and realize the nature of untimely death and impermanence of the human spirit. Warhol was depersonalizing death and distancing himself from emotion and holding on to what is no longer there. When Warhol was approached by a suicidal friend, his only comment was, Can I have your watch? So, going off this theme that Andy Warhol was like a mirror or a reflection for the culture at large, in the culture at large we were seeing death and disaster on the news over and 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 over, and over again. The Vietnam War, the new media, Everywhere there was talk of death 
And so Andy Warhol in his typical Andy Warhol way just reflects it and repeats images of death and disaster over and over and over again. Realizing the impermanence of being human, Warhol sought to preserve certain imagery of pop culture. He was able to take basic life objects and symbols and create permanent icons out of them, much like how religious artwork sought to preserve its most valued idols. Societies each have their own individual cultural ideas that are represented through their artwork, stories, mythology, etc. Warhol became the embodiment of our popular culture and its visual symbology. Warhol's life, as mentioned in the beginning, fits the scheme of the American dream. The repetition fits the values of a consumer culture. The people depicted in his works represent those who became stars and shone their light. These are the few saints of American culture. St. Francis replaced with Marilyn Monroe. This is because the people as a whole felt that the most important thing in life was to become the brightest, greatest star you could be. The ones who are so bright that they cast a light with which everyone can see. Like a Renaissance painter giving the people what they want in terms of many, many repeated images of baby Jesus, Warhol gave the people what they wanted in terms of many, many repeated faces of fame. Warhol liked to give people what they wanted. That was his business. How he made money. It paints him as a kind of strange character because he had such a deep insight for what people want. In the factory, he becomes a sort of manipulator of people, able to manipulate them because he can offer what they want, but maybe what they want isn't what's best for them. It is like today how everyone wants to be famous on social media for 15 minutes, and Warhol seems to have been the first to catch on to this collective cultural desire, 15 minutes of fame. This celebrated quote has become Andy Warhol's most well-known statement, arguably. It has led to the concept of 15 minutes of fame, the idea that celebrity from media scandals to memes will almost always be fleeting. The original quote seems to trace back to a 1968 brochure Warhol distributed at one of his exhibitions in Sweden. But according to art critic Blake Gopnik, it could have been Pointus Holton a famous curator in Europe who coined the phrase. There are other claimants too, including painter Larry Rivers and photographer Nat Finkelstein. Finkelstein insisted that he made the remark in reply to a comment that Warhol made about everyone wanting to be famous, quipping, yeah, for about 15 minutes, Andy. As Gopnik explains to Marketplace, Warhol himself admitted to never saying it in 1980, but by then the line was firmly his, and as Gopnik points out, it really didn't matter. By that point, Warhol, an artist who explored the concept of branding, was firmly a brand of his own, and the 15 minutes quote fits in with that story nicely. So as you can see the screenshots by having a person sit and stare into the camera, just in between them and the camera, it creates a certain intimacy, a certain effect that then transmits to viewers something you wouldn't ordinarily see about one of these characters. And this is part of Andy Warhol's gift. He could simply by looking at the surface of what was there, show us and give us a window into what well, we don't ordinarily see because we're moving so fast. And since he would slow time down by repeating these images over and over and over again, and just by having people stare, stare into a camera.
my name is Andy Warhol, and uh, I just finished eating uh, a hamburger. Burger, New York, 